Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS. Let's find out what's happening at the legislator. Actually, let's talk about more about what's happening with State Senator Mark Mesper and some bills that he has and mm -hmm. a survey that he's done. Okay. Senator, welcome to the show. Well, great to be here as always. We're always glad to have you on so Fridays. The first couple of weeks we hit a lot of the, the budget issues, road funding issues. You know, we hit the big items. So mm -hmm. this week I figured I'd talk about some of the bills I'm specifically working on this session. And, and a few have already passed out of the Senate completely and, and, uh, and, and are on the way over to the House. So um, uh, the first bill that I had filed this year was the Regional Funding Highway Bill. And that's actually passed out of the Transportation Committee uh, unanimously. And it got uh, resubmitted or re whatever, re uh, redirected to the Appropriations Committee. So now I've got to get it past Senator Kenley. Good uh, luck. To, uh, yeah. I mean, he, he gives you homework assignments, and he, he wants you to basically prove to him why, you know, why you're, what you're doing is a good idea, and then if he gives you some things to check, dig into. So right now I'm, I'm trying to, to get him comfortable enough and aware enough of what we're doing, why we're doing it the way we're doing it, because he's got to, you know, if it gets out of his hands, he's got to feel like, you know, he, he endorses it. So okay. um, he makes you do your homework, and that's, that's okay. That's good. Yeah. So, that one is past stage one into, into appropriations. We'll try to get, and he said he, you know, he'll, he's got still about three weeks to work it in, so he's not worried about running out of time on that one. Uh, Senate Bill 129 will be on, up for final passage on Monday, and it should be a slam dunk. Uh, last year, I passed a bill that requires the State Department of Health to get uh, commercial septic system approvals that, that they process at the state. Uh, that they get it done in a 30-day time period or it's automatic approval. Okay. Uh, now, when L LSA was drafting the bill, they got one section of code that referred to the types of systems, you know, the type of projects we wanted done in 30 days. They pulled the wrong code reference. So we have to... See, really, that's just cleaning it's up It's a cleanup. It's okay. a technical bill. And they're, they're complying with the law as we intended it to, to pass last year. But it's, you know, so we have to clean that up. Okay. So that one should be smooth sailing Monday. Uh, Senate Bill 130 has already passed the Senate 49 to nothing. That one allows the owner of a vehicle when you sell it mm -hmm. to get the, the transfer of that title to the new owner initiated. Uh, and, and currently only the buyer can, can do that process when you take the, ti the, you know, the title in. The seller has no ability to, to fix that. So. BMB said, yeah, that's a good idea. We have problems with that all the time. <laughs> okay, so. so in, a, in, in a way, that's cleaning up a that's bill. A, that's, that's cleaning, cleaning up, up a problem. Yeah, and there problem, was a, right? a gentleman in Hayesville called me with that problem last summer, and he said, I sold a car. The guy didn't transfer title. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck with a pile of traffic tickets because the, t the car is still in my name. Because it comes back to him. It comes then. back yeah. to him. Okay. So that one's off and running. Uh, Senate Bill 281, it's a bill that I've got filed. It's in my committee that I'm working with the broadband telecommunications companies to look at how are we going to try to get, you know, underserved or really unserved areas, you know, what, what can we help do to, you know, to streamline and, and, and incentivize, uh, you know, broadband development. The telecommunications industry folks are still, I mean, we've got it kind of, you know, where it would be beneficial as is, but, you know, we, you know I've, I've got a few weeks of committee time, you know, I told them, let's try to get, get your ideas coalesced and wrap this thing up. So, you know, so if we're going to try to move that unserved, you know, rural customer, uh, you know, policy forward, you know, what do we, what do we want to try to do to incentivize that? A bill, another cleanup bill, Senate Bill 282. Last year we passed a bill that if you pick up a, a dog or a cat at a shelter and it's too young to be spayed or neutered, you have to pay a $75 fee, mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't t kick in for five more years or four more years now, but at that point, if you don't bring it back to get spayed or neutered after it's old enough, you for forfeit your deposit. Okay. Well, that's in government terms a, a fee. It, it's, it's a tax. Okay. Um, and the way they had the bill drafted last year, it sent that, those forfeited deposit funds to you know, one specific company that does low-cost spay and neuter services. There's about eight across the state that all, you know, the other ones that provide it mm -hmm. may or may not be the same rates, don't know that, but um, and it's really, it's in violation of the Constitution to have, you know, a company by law 
you know, benefit from. It opens it up to more then. Yes, yeah. what my bill do, it, we're gonna take those forfeited funds, it's gonna go to the Board of An Animal Health, and then they'll administer, you know, people can apply, to, you know, it'll be a grant program. If, and, and they'll, you know, they'll set up the rules on how to do it, but it'll take those forfeited taxes, go to a state agency, and then anybody who's in the low cost spay and neuter service business can, can apply for reimbursement from that. So, another cleanup bill. Mm -hmm. But needed to be done, uh, or in, in four years, somebody would have, you know, when, when it kicked in, somebody would have sued the state and, and easily won, and then the law would have been either tossed or had it been corrected then. Uh, Senate Bill 283 uh, is scheduled for hearing in a couple weeks, and it tightens up the rules on what a pyramid scheme is uh, and allows the Attorney General to have some enforcement uh, power. Currently, we have a, a pyramid scheme law, but it's pretty broadly, pretty loosely defined. Um, and and way, the way some pyramid operators have found a loophole, um, they offer discount Con, uh, you know, consumer discount programs for a fee of thousands of dollars that's no different than the discounts you can get with Ebates or Groupon or, okay. or being a Farm Bureau member or you know, AARP member. I mean, those same discounts that you get for being in any of those groups, you know, for $2,000, you can get these discounts from them for being a member of their, you know, club. Mm -hmm. So they're providing no tangible service for the fee, and it's just a, it's a way to, to, to a loophole in our pyramid laws. So we're going to give them some teeth. That if you're going to be a company that provides a service, it has to have you know tangible, measurable uh, things that the AG's office can can clearly determine if you're a legi legitimate business or a pyramid. Okay. So. Uh, work with the Attorney General's office to have them make sure there's any tweaking they want to done on the, bi on the bill and they're, they've come back with a couple recommendations and we'll get that one moving shortly so happy about that. Another bill passed out of committee yesterday. I uh, met with the, uh, the Southwest Indiana uh, Child Abuse Counseling folks last summer. There was a bill that was passed four years ago that requires the Department of Education to prepare you know child abuse training material you know to age appropriate to show to kids and, and training for, for, for faculty, but no requirement that anybody actually use it. Hmm. So, kind of odd, but, um, and we had the testimony we had in committee yesterday, which it, it was just, you know, gut-wrenching of, you know, women from ages four to 16 that were abused at different points in their life by, you know, men and women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's groups that are out there that, that take those victims and help, you know, help try to, you know, heal the mental wounds. But, uh, you know, the sooner, and uh, as a Cub Scout leader, my perspective on, on that is we're required every year to show video, a bit, training video to our kids. It's called what ha It Happened to Me. That gives them different scenarios of inappropriate contact by adults. And if it happens to you, tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Easily done. It's, it's a short video. The kids see it. They see it every year. You know, just to, because if it happens, you want, you want to, at the, or the quicker you intervene when something like that happens, the, the less, I mean, the less traumatic the damage is. Mm -hmm. The longer it goes on, the, I mean, the statistical evidence of drug abuse, um, suicide rates, you know, the, the, the destructive behaviors lifelong are, are just astronomical for people that, are, that were abused as children. Mm -hmm. So, passed out a committee yesterday, uh, eight to zero, and it'll go, you know, onto the full, full, house, or full Senate next week. I guess at this point now I have to start preparing for who my author is gonna be on the House side, because I need to have somebody who's, who feels pretty compelled to, you know, to push the issue and try to figure out which committee it's going to. But I'll, I'm going to start talking to House members about when the bill comes over, you know, are you an advocate for trying to get this fixed? So it requires that kids be taught and that teachers be, you know, given some, you know, training material just like me as a, as a 
anybody involved with youth programs, you know, has has training on child protecting, child protective, um, continuing ed. So, not hard to do. Um, really, really, was was everybody on that committee? I'm sure was heavily moved with you know the need. So, looking forward to getting that one done. The biggest bill we passed, I think statewide attention this week was Senate Bill 545 and that's the bill that would allow that would require uh, businesses that sell more than hundred thousand dollars of, of product into our state or have more than 200 customers per year into our state to require that they re remit sales tax you know collect and remit sales tax it's moving that that type of legislation is moving in several states there's been several states that have that have already done and then and if, if it's carefully crafted and you know, there, there's been <clears throat> court challenges or, you know, on various stages of that. Some that have been too aggressive have gotten them tossed. But the federal government could deal with that and have it, you know, remedied immediately. Uh, there's been some resistance, you know, by a committee chairman in the House that's stopped that for several years. So state by state, they're going to try to piece together legislation to require that. It, it's anticipated that that's about a $200 million per year impact you know, to our state right now on, on uncollected sales tax. So, and, and for the brick and mortar companies in your hometown, it's a big deal. Because mm -hmm. they're paying it. They have to they're, pay Well, it. they're collecting it. They're collect, yeah, they're collecting it. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty significant. And uh, just a, a quick recap, I know we're running short on time. Yeah. Um, did my survey, got the uh, partial returns back uh, th that uh, at, at least enough to think we're we're probably going to be pretty close to these final numbers. They'll tweak a little bit. But uh, asked, what, what do you think the number one need we need to address you know, this year is? And, and the, the number one uh, category we got back was, was increased road funding. Which is happening. Which is so happening. Okay. And then the second question is, what would be your primary way you'd like to see that increased revenue come from, and the number one response uh, by far was was increase in gas tax, mm -hmm. um, which, is, what's which gonna, is which is good. Okay. It's a it's really a user fee, like we talked about last year or last week, um, and then talked about a couple other issues. Um, there's a pilot program we started three years ago, has two more years in the pilot about you know the impact of, of preschool, you know, and and it's a five year pilot program. You want to start these kids, you want to test them at the end of third grade and see is there a, is there a measurable significant difference because some studies have shown there is and some have shown that there isn't. And the question was should we start to expand the program before we get the results of the, of the pilot program done and 75% and of my respondents said, you know, just wait. And to me that makes the most sense, you know, I'm, I'm, but there's a big push to try to get you know, preschool funding for everybody, and that's got a big price tag. And mm -hmm. So there may be some movement on that. Um, you know, my response from my district said, you know, hold, and that's kind of where I, I think we need to be. Uh, and then uh, do you support collecting DNA samples from, from people that are arrested? You know, because DNA samples can be used, you know, in, in the case of, you know, rape or violent crime. You know, having DNA samples to help you know, track down criminals, you know, in other areas, uh, that was, that had an 80% support to go ahead and, you know, collect a DNA sample from people that are, when they're, you get your fingerprints, you know, but at the same time, also collect DNA. Uh, it helps law enforcement immensely, so. Surprise that was that strong, but it was a pretty solid support for that, so. Well, it, that goes to show, that just the survey, that, mm -hmm. and, and Mark really is accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, I see you everywhere. Try to be. Uh, yeah, you you are you really do make the rounds. And um, if you've got something you'd like to talk to Mark about, like the guy from Hayesville with with the uh, car mm -hmm. title, it was excellent. You know that's oh, that's yeah. what Mark does, and, and he is glad to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Senator, thank okay. you very much for You're coming. You're very in welcome. Again. My it's pleasure. It's always a pleasure to see you. We'll see you next Friday. Yep. We'll All be right. Here. Same time. Uh, now you've caught up on what's happening with the state legislation concerning Mark Mesmer, State Senator Mark Mesmer. Join us again next Friday as Mark comes back again. Thank you for watching WJTS Inform. We're local people watching local people.